Hello, my friend. Welcome back to the conversation part of Chapter Five. In this chapter, we're talking about filial piety and fraternal love, and this is a very meaningful topic in modern times. So today we have a Hermey again to join our discussion. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So, in modern hustle and bustle life, we young people always find thousands of excuses not. Going back home, leaving their parents at home, and、uh, when they are asked about what filial piety means to them, and、uh, they said, "Well, we know that we we want to be good sons and daughters to to our parents, but as a matter of fact, do you think that they really understand the essence, the true meaning of filial piety?" So that is one thing. Another thing is that. Like in last chapter, we were talking about the humaneness, and in Confucius' view, that filial piety is one of the root of the humaneness. So I would like to comment a little bit on this. Yes. Yeah.、Uh, because in the last chapter we talked about、uh, humaneness and we talked about like why it is so important, and、uh, I would say that humaneness is very important because it、uh, can bring、uh, harmony and uh, uh, balance in the society. So,、uh, but the question is that how can we play our part to bring that balance? So a balance cannot be created in the society unless we know that how to create good relationships.、So So good relationship,、uh, start, a, a very good, a very close relationship starts from your parents and your siblings. So if we know how to make our close、uh, relationship stable, then in this way we will have a better understanding of、uh, the social relationships and their existence. And when we will know、uh, the that okay, these are our close relationships, and we have to treat them like that. And okay, then we know how to extend this kind of practice to our social. Relationship, then in this way we will、uh, create that harmony in the society, and it will also bring about the social solidarity.、Mm-hmm. Because I think filial piety, as Confucius also mentioned, that it is、uh, one important part of humaneness,、mm-hmm. and I w- I also see it as a way that symbolizes our lives, like our connection. Also, actually, filial piety is the way that symbolizes how we live as human beings. And also a, our our connection with the nature and the heaven.、Mm-hmm. So this is the key. I think we cannot talk about humaneness without the discussion of filial piety. Yes, indeed. And actually, in this chapter, we see that filial piety is a manifestation of a traditional, traditional、uh, culture. So the humaneness is root. And filial piety, and along with loyalty, trustworthiness, and righteousness, etc., as the external expressions. Then the next question will be: How to be filial son or filial daughter、mm-hmm. to your parents? How should I do? Yes. Yes.、Um, uh, many people think that being filial means just absolute. Obedience to your parents and whatever they say, you have to exactly follow that. I know it's good to、um, uh, take advice from your parents, but it doesn't mean that、uh, that you have to like completely. Comple- you just have to adopt exactly the same uh, uh, I- ideology or you know、uh, thinking pattern of your parents. Actually, filial piety is more about、uh, being、uh, respectful to your parents, showing reverence to them because.、Uh, According to Confucius' teachings, we have to be kind and we have to be polite with the parents. Even though sometimes there will be situations that some disagreements will、uh, will happen, because it's very natural. Whenever we、uh, we have any relationships, there comes a time that we have some dis- disagreement with the other person in the relationship. So we cannot avoid that. But the thing is that we should not use any harsh words to disagree with them. We can tell them, okay, this is your opinion and this is、uh, my opinion, and I would like to do it that way. But、uh, if you will、uh, refrain from using any harsh language, then it will,、uh, you know, it will not、uh, break their heart, and they will, and you will do it in a very respectful manner. I、mm-hmm. think so. Yes, actually, you brought forth a very、uh, important、um, the concept about the obedience, the difference between the obedient son and a filial son. Actually, they are not 
the same. Yes. So, as a matter of fact, the filial son should have a kind of a responsibility to point out what his parents might do something wrongly. So, but the difficult part is that how, in what way? Because uh, on the one hand, one want to be kind of uh, filial to their parents and follow the instructions uh, given by the parents. But when they notice that, they might be wrong. And how to let them know? Sometimes it, their advice is not accepted by the parents. So what we should do? So you, you have mentioned that, well, in yeah. a polite way, respectful yeah. way, yeah. and gentle way. Mm -hmm. So actually, that exactly what Confucius said in his book, and I would like to quote several sentences. And Confucius was saying that in serving his parents, a good son should, in a gentle way, dissuade them from doing wrongly. And even when he knows that his advice might be ignored, he should not show any sign of a disobedience and should still be respectful and even when he feels burdensome attending to them. So he should not complain. So exactly what you said just now. But still, well, I don't think we, we can uh, understand this true meaning about to what extent we show our fellow reverence to our parents. Like in old Chinese saying that you, you, it's impossible for you to be filial when your parents lie in bed for many, many years. And, um, and also uh, it's difficult for you to always have a smile on your face while serving your parents with a the reverence. So, and then we're talking about a three year mourning. Have you heard of this story? Yes. A dialogue between the uh, Zai Wo and uh, Confucius. Uh, Zai Wo was uh, one of the uh, disciples who is uh, good at speaking. Speech. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a very eloquent and always would like to argue with, um, with the master. And uh, he was uh, uh, doubt, doubting about this three year mourning. And he was saying that one year is enough. So, and uh, the master's reply is simple. If you feel one year mourning, it's enough for you to do it. But as a matter of fact, thinking about uh, our parents and uh, nursing us, no parents stop nursing their children until they, they were getting three years old. So that's the basic story about this dialogue. So, yes, what do you I, think of it? I have heard about this and I think it makes uh, complete sense because as you mentioned now that uh, uh, when, uh, we, when, when we are kids and uh, our parents do their best to provide us, you know, everything mm -hmm. and they take care of us in the best, um, in the best manner, it is also a kind of way to uh, show our reverence to, the, uh, to our parents. So when our parents are dead, so it's a kind of thing that we have to feel that we have suffered a loss. It shouldn't be like, okay, they are dead and next day you are fine. Mm -hmm. So when they say, uh, talk about three year mourning, then it's uh, feeling that pain that you have lost something very important in your life. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that uh, after three years we are going to forget about them, but three uh, years in intensely we have to uh, uh, we have to remember that what teachings they have uh, given us and how they uh, they used to treat us and we can remember we can remember them and whatever if they had any kind of uh, uh, wishes we can try to fulfill them mm -hmm. you know to uh, to make their soul happy or and or just to uh, carry on that tradition so I think this this completely makes sense and this is fair enough to uh, to carry on this tradition, yes. Yes, just uh, think about their approaching age and uh, even if we have an argument or disputes, a disagreement, and uh, think about their age and think about they are no longer alive in the, in the future. So we definitely we can uh, uh, sacrifice our small interest to satisfy yes. their needs. Yeah, and also about um, in in Confucius uh, philosophy, there is a, uh, a kind of uh, family line or ancestral line idea, and it was talking about well that son should continue and transmit the work 
of the father. And actually, it was it refers to the Shun's story. So Shun is one of the most uh, filial son uh, in China's history, and he he he's got a very uh, ruthless uh, father, vicious mother, and a very hostile. Uh, the half brother, and on the one hand, he was trying to avoid being killed by his family members. On the other hand, he always show at near hand when he is wanted and needed. So such a great filial piety. So, so the story is about about the Shun. So Shun is like a transcend what has been interpreted as very. Um, basic meaning of filial piety, literal meaning of filial piety, but if we transcend it and um, make it to the, the up level, it should be like this uh, uh, father's will and uh, transmit it. Mm -hmm. so. uh, I think uh, this, the thing that you have mentioned about transmitting the work of the uh, father, I think many people confuse it with that. Okay, if your father, uh, if my father was a carpenter, then I have to be a carpenter. But it's not about transmitting his work. It's not that uh, means that you have to do what your father used to do. But it's more like uh, continuing his will or his uh, his work in a way that maybe when your father was alive and he wanted to uh, do some uh, something or carry out some activities which he couldn't do it can, it could be like he wanted to uh, create a school for the orphan people or or he or his will could be anything about uh, like giving his wealth to some people or his, his any advice like uh, some parents wants the kids to be united even when they are dead mm -hmm. so but uh, what happens is that when the parents are dead is a uh, kids because of their busy lives and we are unable to uh, to fulfill their wishes mm -hmm. or even be united with their siblings. They're talking about moral things, not mm -hmm. about like doing exactly what your father used to do. Mm -hmm. Or you have to, uh, uh, you have to take the same profession as your father. Mm -hmm. No, it's uh, in my understanding, as far as I know, that it is, uh, it is something uh, more about, you know, following the moral values. Yes, it's a kind of a continuous attempt to follow or to expand your moralities to the fullest. So uh, actually it's about like uh, inheritance, inheritance of a family spirit and even the inheritance of uh, the cultural spirit. So if we're talking about family in a, in a narrow sense, you start from your own family with a biological tie. And then if we think about the country, if I think about the culture and uh, in a broader sense, we we can see the country is our big family. Yeah. So just now you were talking about starting from a family, family and you create a kind of a harmonious social uh, relations and then which will lead to the social solida solidarity you mentioned. It is true. And uh, so, so that's, that explains that uh, the filial piety is one of the, the root of humanness. So in order to possess the humanness, in you, and you need to, to start at home. Um, yes. So as a matter of fact, the home, the family is a kernel, uh, I mean unit, and then it's a kind of a starting point of a socialization. At the end, uh, I would like to, your, to comment on the, another sentence. It was saying that, well, when his parents are alive, the son should not travel far. So if he has to go away from home, and he must know his whereabouts. So what would you perceive it um, from the modern perspective? Mm -hmm. And do we have to tell our parents where we're going? And especially when we face a kind of a choice, we need to decide about our career and about our future. And do you have to follow the instruction of your fathers and uh, yes. yes i would uh, i would say only one thing here and that is the most important thing i believe in it that priorities like uh, no matter how busy you are if you have that priority 
you will do that thing. So I know uh, when we are young, we are making our careers and we are so busy that we think that we do not have time for these things. Mm -hmm. So first thing is that if you want to do something, then you will do that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it is being said that if there is a will, there is a way. Mm -hmm. So another thing, um, as you mentioned, uh, that we can sometimes uh, we can let go of our small interests for the for the betterment of uh, of, of our family. Mm -hmm. So it's also okay. So first thing that uh, you have to prioritize your mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, uh, your work. That okay, uh, this is my work and this is my family. So you have to divide your time. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing, even if you have to give up some of your small interests, then you. Uh, you can do it for the sake of your family. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And maybe in the future you are going to get some uh, other benefits from it. So um, I think this is all about your own will. Mm -hmm. Well, I would like to contribute a word, but not actually from me, um, equilibrium, balance. We need to find a balance. So the life is always full of uh, contradictories and uh, conf even disputes and conflicts. So how to face that disputes and how to challenge it, how to solve, find a resol re resolution to, to, to deal with it. Back to the Confucius, uh, uh, Confucian uh, philosophy, that is equilibrium. Just like what we have learned in the doctrine of Ming. And uh, so, yeah, that's the end of uh, today's uh, dialogue part. Okay.